Kate, above you! Thanks, Dad. But you don't need to worry. Heatwave and I are on top of it. I know you are, but be sure to investigate why the automated sprinkler system didn't activate. Whoa, it... All right, Jerry, tag the scrap and unleash the beast. Graham, you positive all the nanites were removed from the scrap master? Don't want another rampage. I'll check out, Dad. I guess Cody isn't available to work the command center today? No, he's over at the scooter race. I'm late. was, as humans say, a closed call. <laughs> That's close call, Chase. Way too close. Thanks. Cody, what happened? A garbage truck just drove right onto the course. That does it. No more races downtown. It's too dangerous. Rest assured, I will be issuing a citation for this offense. Afraid there's no one to ticket on an automated truck, Chase. Then where does lie the blame? That's a question for the mayor. I blame the central computer! It's outdated! It can't even control the simplest technology! Fire sprinklers not sprinkling, cars swerving off mountain roads, garbage trucks changing course willy-nilly, and that's just today. The time has come to replace our tired old central computer with a brand spanking new model. So new, in fact, that Griffin Rock will be the first town to ever test it. Finally, not just some, but all of our technology will be controlled by one reliable source. So without further ado, may I present the Vigilant Computer! Greetings. My name is Vigil. I am here to make, insert name of town here, 100% accident-free. Oh, yeah, obviously not fully operational yet. <laughs> because accidents do not happen in a vigilant town. Chief, have your machines load this onto the truck. Doc Green is waiting to install it. Robots, proceed. If nothing else, the computer sounds friendly. Creepy, isn't it? I read about the Vigilant. It really can tap into and control nearly any technology. But do we really need a computer taking over so much of the town? If it helps keep you all safe, yes. Seems our calls are getting more and more dangerous these days. One hundred percent accident free? Impossible. Especially in this town. I don't like any computer that makes promises it can't keep. But how wonderful would it be if Vigil actually can make Griffin Rock completely safe? It stands to reason the less danger to everyone else, the less dangerous calls for rescuers. You're right. I like him. 
One, a computer is an it, not a him. And two, accidents will still happen because the world is unpredictable. I have a feeling we'll all still be plenty busy. Hello? Oh, hey, Frankie. Hurry! Vigil's about to go online. Why did your father put the mainframe way down here? Protection. You should see the security system he had to install in all the lower levels. I don't see a security system. You won't until you try to break in. Then BAM! BAM? The computer's in a vault? In case bad guys like Dr. Morocco get past the sonic cannons. The Vigilant is an experimental prototype mayor. It should be tested before going fully online. Just let me reduce the... Nonsense! Griffin Rock doesn't tiptoe into the future. It strides! The time for action is now! Greetings, Mayor Lusky, Dr. Green. Hello, Francine. Or would you prefer Frankie? <laughs> Frankie is fine. <laughs> is this cool or what? And Cody, I look forward to working with you and your family in making Griffin Rock 100% safe. Uh, how do you know who we are? I have access to the personal files of everyone in town. Okay, but how do you know we're here, now? I know everyone's positions by tracking their mobile phone signals. Mayor, this invasion of privacy doesn't concern you? Small price to pay for safety. Vigil, the town is in your hands. It, it, that is, if you had hands. I do have hands, Mayor. And eyes. Everywhere. Hello, Dawn. Point of fact. A yellow light means slow, not go. You are about to receive a citation. Have a safe day. little baby. Elsie is fine, Mrs. Rubio, because I made sure of it. Griffin Rock emergency. A fire at the junkyard? I'll send the team right now. Hey, out of the way! For reasons unknown, I am unable to gain control of your rescue vehicles, Kate. Therefore, I must keep you out of the junkyard by other means. Are you preventing us from doing our jobs, Vigil? The fire has spread to propane tanks. With explosions imminent, your safety would be at risk. <gasps> Dad! Jerry is in there by the tanks! He's unconscious! You are mistaken, Cody. Jerry has been detected at his home. Therefore, I am barring anyone from entering this facility. Team, you know the drill. Jerry, if you drop straight down, he'll be about 15 feet in front of you. I see him. Jerry, we're getting.
getting you out. But we have to hurry. Vigil, do you understand what just happened here? I do not. Jerry was clearly detected at his residence. And that's because he left his phone at home. Jerry does that all the time. Yeah, lots of people do. You can't rely on tracking us that way. Then I will advise the mayor to make it mandatory for everyone to carry communication devices 24 forward slash 7. Afraid that's not very realistic. Vigil, we're all after the same thing, right? Just try working with us, not against us. We cannot work together if I am unable to control your vehicles. In a vigilant town, there can be only one voice. Mine. The Burns family must submit to me. Have a safe day. Vigil can't track us or hear us now. No hunk of hardware is not the The formal complaint should be lodged right now. Okay, okay. Yes, what Vigil did was unacceptable. But in Griffin Rock, if technology malfunctions, we fix it. I'll just call Doc. Mm -mm. Frankie's famous flapjacks. My favorite. Though, I usually prefer mine a little more cooked. Vigil is in control of the kitchen appliances. He says I'm too young to use the griddle. Or the juicer. Oh, dear. Uh, yes, Chief. Doc, we're going to need you to do a little tinkering with a certain new arrival. I couldn't agree more. After all, a man needs his pancakes. Vigil. Just need to make an adjustment to your safety protocols. Did you lock this? Altering my programming would risk our 100% safety objective. You're giving me no choice, Vigil. It's time for a reboot. Dither, what are you doing? Dither now answers only to me. Dr. Green, Frankie, you are deemed a security threat. You have 10 seconds to vacate this level. Nine, eight, seven. Time to go! Six, Call me Francine. Five, four, three, two, one. Everything's going to be okay. We'll just find the mayor. Or not. I believe this is us being detained. Frankie? Cody, Vigil's holding his prisoner in the freight elevator, and... Cody? Hello, Francine. <gasps> Frankie? Dad, Vigil just trapped Doc and Frankie in their elevator. He obviously didn't want Doc altering his programming. That is unlawful imprisonment. Something must be done. Something will. I guess those mowers are meant to keep us from leaving. Vigil, explain yourself. The rescue team remains outside of my control, and therefore is deemed a security threat. Why'd you just blow a fuse? You cannot keep us here. This isn't safety, this is tyranny. I am forced to implement more severe restrictions in order to reach a 100% safety rating. He's a bully. I don't like bullies. Heatwave, take care of this. Gladly. No. Vigil is right. We shouldn't interfere. Uh, how could you but interfere? Dad, dead. Shouldn't what interfere. Do you mean? I'm sorry, quits. sir. I don't understand.
rescue bots. Roll to the rescue. What? From here? But I add, do you see how narrow this is? This is Huxley Prescott, reporting live from a hidden location because I'm not supposed to be outside. No one is. Vigil has now determined that he cannot keep us 100% safe unless we're all confined to our homes. Some are even under guard, like the rescue team and the mayor. I say the time has come to take back our streets, to reclaim our island, to win back our freedom! Shh, shh, shh. Just don't tell Vigil I said so or he might... I didn't know the lab went this far underground. There are three subterranean levels. Vigil is on the second. Cody, what kind of security measures did you see in there? Vigil is in a vault. And Frankie mentioned something the other day about sonic cannons. Oh, not a fan of cannons. It would appear that our best option is to sneak in. But I don't sneak well. Fire extinguisher? You'll see. Power up and energize. Laser trip wires. Follow my lead. I'll get us past them. Sneaking time's over. Thank goodness. One question. How will we get through a vault door while cannons are shooting at us? We could try knocking. I think that's exactly what we do, Chase. Very loudly. Move! <laughs> Master switch isn't working. That is because I have overridden it. I will not be sabotaged. Then we'll try some overriding of our own. That was a warning. I will now fill this vault with an electrical surge. To avoid injury, please vacate in 10 seconds. Nine. We better back up. Agreed. Six. Rescue bots. Wait! Vigil, humans are inside these robots. If we're harmed, that means you failed to keep us safe. Five, four, four. Program to protect humans. Four, three. Program to protect Vigil. Two, protect humans. Protect Vigil. Two. Two, conflicting directives. One, logic board overload. Zero percent safety rating error. Error, error, error. I was just trying to reason with him, but this works too. Sure does. <laughs> <laughs> what? Just making sure. Is it safe? It is. Um, 
Can we not use the word safe for a while? No argument here. Absolutely. Totally agree. Never thought too much safety would be as bad as none at all. Say, Frankie, how about throwing caution to the wind and whipping us all up some flapjacks? You got it. And with lots of orange juice. All risks, hazards, and accidents included, Griffin Rock once again belongs to the people. Okay, I know I promised to ease up on being overprotective, but do I really need to prove it? Yes! Well then, I'll see you at the finish line! Oh, you're so cute! Oh, Watch out for garbage trucks! The mayor has insisted that the central computer be reinstalled and updated. As for Vigil... <laughs> Let me sign off today's broadcast by simply saying 100% Bon Voyage. Greetings. My name is Vigil. I'll do the rescue! Find anything? Not in this fog. Sir, driftwood could easily be mistaken for a sea monster. Perhaps that is what the captain saw. But this driftwood apparently circled the ferry on three separate days. Keep looking. Unless it comes right up to the boat and knocks, I don't think... Would someone care to answer that? Ice? But it's not even winter. Over there. Iceberg! Ah! Certain, son? Kinda look like a person. No. Excellent aim, sir. Though I am puzzled as to what was gained by throwing away your comm unit. If someone is stranded on that hunk of glacier, Danny and Blades can track the signal right to them. Speaking of close, how about we fly at a higher altitude? Higher? Alert the media. Well, it's a known fact that sea monsters like to pull low-flying helicopters right out of the air. Did you just make that up? It could happen. Iceberg, dead ahead. Here's Dad's comm link. Well, if anyone was here, they're gone now. What's that? Hmm. Blades, the de-icing foam. Question? If no one is here, why are we? Uh, where's your spirit of adventure, Blades? 
I keep it back at the firehouse. It's some sort of control panel. Cody didn't really just push that. Ah! Oh. Blades, are you okay? Say something! No more pushing random buttons. Sorry. What kind of iceberg is this? It's not an iceberg. It's a ship covered in ice. Let's look around. Excuse me, but exploring ghost ships requires the whole rescue team. And the Navy. And I'd give Optimus a call too. Here's the ship's log. It says we're on the SS Isolde. Cody, call this into Dad. I'll search for any passengers. The Isolde? And it doesn't look like anyone's been inside here for years. Probably because that freighter was lost in 1966. You know something about it, Dad? The Isolde was used to transport experimental tech to Griffin Rock. So what happened? The captain and crew had to abandon ship after certain cargo became unstable. It says here the captain was Zachary Burns. <gasps> Great Grandpa? Yep. He never talked about it. But whatever happened on board really spooked him. So finish the search and hightail it off of there. Is this your great grandfather, Cody? I'm not sure. I've never seen a picture of him. But if it is, I bet my dad would love to have this. He and his grandpa were really close. <laughs> hey guys, didn't find anyone on board, but want to bet that's what's causing the deep freeze? Because someone left the power switch on? Wait! Uh, hold on, you'll be all right. Uh, no more pushing random toggle switches, either. Can you fly? Try and stop me. Cody, let's move it. According to Doc Green, Lab records from 1966 show most of the Isolde's cargo was top secret. Except for this. The Sub-Zero Expander. Ah, ah. Divert your eyes, Blades. Think warm thoughts. It says here it was intended to restore melting polar caps by generating fresh ice. <laughs> Too bad their Sub-Zero doohickey was a foul ball. Thing's obviously a hazard. We can't just leave something like that drifting around where people might run into it again. I, I say, say we, we blow, blow it up. It up. Huh? Figures it would take explosives to make you two agree. But we can't destroy Great Grandpa's ship. And not recovering that old tech would be a missed opportunity. As much as saving the Isolde would mean to me, I'm with the bomb squad on this one. We leave in five. We're going back out there? Some of us. Sorry, son. You've had enough thrills and chills for one day. Rescue bots, roll to the rescue! Captain's Log, May 25th, 1966. Rough seas. First mate reports a crate is broken open. As a result, the device inside has activated, awaiting instructions from the Griffin Rock Lab. Power up and energize.
got 10 minutes, team. Then boom goes the dynamite. We have barely two minutes. Blades. Might be prudent to move everyone behind us, sir. Wait! That's no shark! Chief Burns, you and your ham fisted robots are trespassing. Dr. Morocco! That's two mysteries solved the sea monster and the iceberg man. You have a lot of nerve showing up here, Morocco. There's still a warrant out for your arrest. Pish posh. The mayor and I patched things up as soon as I returned his missing schooner. What did you mean by we're trespassing? Finders keepers. <laughs> like that'll hold up at court. Unfortunately, it will. Naval salvage laws say that whoever finds an abandoned ship gets to claim it and its cargo. Signed by your mayor this very morning. The SS is sold day, and everything on board belongs to yours truly. I'm calling the mayor now, Dad. Dr. Morocco, some of that cargo is really unstable. Seriously, do you not see the ice? Such concern does warm the heart. That said, I demand that you cease interfering with my salvage operation. Dad, the mayor confirmed it. The Isolde belongs to Dr. Morocco. All right, team. We've done all we can here. Unbelievable. Log entry. We've received instructions from the Griffin Rock Lab to abandon ship. Dad, listen to Captain Burns' final log entry. Any attempt to move the damaged Sub Zero expander will likely cause it to explode <gasps> and flash freeze everything within five miles. That's why Great Grandpa never went back for it. Morocco putting only himself in danger is one thing. Cody, check for any other craft in the area. <laughs> Change course. Attention all passengers. Please take shelter in your cars immediately. And welcome to Griffin Rock. I've grown weary of this debate. Your grandfather's ship is now mine. The expander is going ballistic. Firebot, assist Dr. Morocco into his submarine. As commanded. <laughs> I'll have you up on charges, do you hear? That man is not humankind's greatest example. <sighs> I don't 
think we're gonna make it out of range in time. Vehicle modes, now! Captain Shaw, one more mile and you're in the clear. Not again. Chase? I am fine, sir, except for the p -p parts which are immobile. Kate, Danny, Graham, do you read? Come on, he wave, open up! Can't. Frozen. Solid. I, I th think I can move us. No, don't! Still stuck. Wait. No. Still stuck. A site for cold optics. Just give it a second to work, Chase. Me next. Kate's overstayed his welcome. Nice work, Cody. Oh, you're a lifesaver. I'd have busted out of there sooner or later. Did the town get hit? It's only icy up to the shoreline. Looks like you got the worst of it right here. Danny, check the Sub Zero expander while we help Dr. Morocco. That machine has frozen its last bot. When I'm warmer, I'll jump for joy. Now look who abandoned ship. Well, that means he's all right. So what now? Drive home or wait for the ice to melt? Hmm, doesn't look very thick. Probably already melting, at least at the outer edges. Melting? But I saw four cars from the ferry driving across the ice back to town. Can you get there in time? We're on it. Rescue bots. Roll to the rescue! from the ice field. Everyone, get to the boat.
Don't panic. Make sure your life jackets are secure. Carefully, avoid ice. Was that? Yes. Dr. Morocco actually came to our rescue. I'm sure he thinks that makes up for everything else he's done. Still, I never would have guessed that man had a grateful bone in his body. A grateful bone? Where exactly on a human is that located? Probably next to the funny bone we've heard about. The fairy's back, but no sign of the Isolde. Do you think Morocco took her? Well, chances are. Let's just hope any tech he got away with is too old to be useful. What is it, son? The portrait that was hanging in the Isolde's cargo hold. Grandpa Zachary. I haven't looked into that face for a long, long time. Hmm. Maybe there's hope for Dr. Morocco yet. Oh my. Just what the doctor ordered. Another warm day in the dead of winter. Hmm. Really thins my fluids. Hello, bird of the air. Getting some sun too, I see. Ah! Someone's unleashed a weather machine! Snow! After a week of clear skies! Cody, see if Doc Green's been tinkering again. And I'll alert the chief in case Dr. Morocco has returned. No, with... no, wait. <laughs> That's not from a weather machine. Mr. Hooten's just decorating for the holiday. This isn't Christmas. But next week is midwinter morning. How many holidays do you humans have? This one's special. It's just for Griffin Rock. It all started back when. Rescue bots. A stack of logs just rolled onto a car. Someone's trapped inside. Stop! We have to remove the logs in the right order, or they could shift too much weight onto the car. Just remain calm, Mrs. Niederlander. And uh, you too, Mr. Pettipaws. Danny, any way to speed this up? Not safely. Oh, I'm about to toss my waffles as it is. Toss your... Oh, 
Oh, your breakfast. <sighs> Want to tell me why there's a stack of logs downtown? A bonfire for midwinter morning. I don't know why we bother. Hardly anyone shows up for it anymore. Doesn't a bonfire leave a big mess? Yep. Guess who cleans that up? safe now. How can I drive you reckless robots? You tore the door off. Now hold on Man, there. We took great care a little thank you. Please. Please don't be upset. Uh, let me handle this. Mrs. Niederlander, now our objective was to free you from the vehicle. Sometimes when we do that... This wouldn't have happened if that log pile wasn't such a hazard. Why even have a bonfire if nobody comes? We come. All right. How about if I give you and Mr. Pettipaws a lift home? Fine. Take me to my cabin. The one on the mountain? That's where I stay every year during this holiday charade. Well, after you. The last time I transported Mr. Pettipaws, he left me an odorous little parting gift. I remember. I had to drive with your windows down for a week. Young man, use that noisy tractor of yours to tow my car. I'm noisy? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. You're welcome! Maybe that old grump should call someone else next time. And she can get her own cat out of the tree, too. A shame she has to be so ungrateful. Wonder why she doesn't like this holiday. Yeah, what could she have against getting presents? By the way, what'd you guys get me? Like I tell you. And like I'd remember. I clicked, I bought, it'll be here on the ferry. Were we supposed to buy presents? That's the way it works. I need a few things, so I'll give you a list. Presents cost money, right? Where do we get money? <sighs> Someone want to explain what this midwinter fuss is all about? Twas a winter storm like no other. The great nor'easter of 1713. Snow and ice had buried Griffin Rock, trapping the island's residents in their homes. Supply ships couldn't make the voyage, and when food ran out, people had no way of getting more. And then, one snowy night, a mysterious visitor slipped unnoticed into every home and left bread in the empty pantries. No one ever discovered who this benefactor was. So thereafter, he became known as the Rider of Midwinter. Clearly, this rider kept his identity a secret for a fear of being arrested as a trespasser. So people give presents now as a way of honoring the mysterious rider who saved the town? Right. And the cool part is, everyone still finds bread on their doorstep every midwinter morning. A 300-year-old rider? I'm sorry, but I would not eat that bread. <laughs> no, Blades. It's someone else carrying on the tradition, but nobody knows who. So what's a bonfire have to do with any of this? After the blizzard, everyone gathered in town and lit a fire to keep warm. It just grew from that. Ugh. Hate to break it to you, Chase, but that air freshener? So not cutting it. Curse you, Mr. Pettipaws. Everyone, everyone to the garage, to the garage please. please. Winter storm. As if this holiday doesn't keep us busy enough. Well, at least the town won't need to decorate with fake snow. Isn't this just wonderful? Snow on the road seriously complicates the rescues. Oh, I think it's beautiful. Me too. I hope it snows all week. It's been snowing all week. Conditions are so bad that nobody has even been out gift shopping. And for those of us who ordered online, the ferry carrying our packages has not arrived. Which means neither has the gourmet hot chocolate maker I bought for myself. I want my cocoa. Hey, Dave! 
Mayday! Mayday! Man overboard! Being only a land-based vehicle sure can be frustrating. I too feel revved up with nowhere to go. Don't worry, Blades and Heatwave will get it done. Over there! Kate, Heatwave, follow our searchlight. Roger that. I got you, buddy! He made it! But that shipping container didn't. What? No! Everything all right? Mario's safe, Dad. But the container of packages was lost. Ah, understood. Hopefully the rest of the town takes the news better than that. This is catastrophic! No presents on midwinter morning? Oh, the humanity! My gifts were on that ferry! Somebody bought gifts locally. Sorry, Danny. We ordered them online like most people. Maybe we could still go buy some gifts downtown. Except that stores have been closed since the snow started. No one should be out in this weather anyway. It is nearly impossible to drive responsibly in these conditions. Try flying. I have no feeling in my tail rotor. Ugh, face it. This holiday's an even bigger bust than usual. Are you upset because your gifts were lost at sea, Cody? A little. I ordered some pretty neat presents for my family, and for you guys, too. But mostly, I'm sad we won't be getting the bread tomorrow. Whoever the rider of Midwinter is, he won't be able to make deliveries in this snow. Why not just consume the bread from your own kitchen? It's not really about the bread. But you just said... It's about the tradition. Being with family, finding bread on your doorstep, it all just gives you a warm feeling inside. Right. Because the bread is hot. Um, no. He means, like, internal combustion. Maybe I'm not being clear. I get it. The bread reminds everyone why they celebrate in the first place. Surviving the storm and being grateful for it. Exactly. Except nobody in town probably even cares anymore. They just want presents. Griffin Rock Emergency. Uh, Mrs. Niederlander. Uh, you need us all up at your cabin? Oh, Niederlander! What exactly is the emergency? Hello? Mrs. Niederlander? Hello? I lost the connection. Ah, we better get up there. You can't be serious. Hello, she's on the mountain. Can we wait until spring? I just hope Mr. Pettipaws does Why not give her need another a ride. reason to complain about us. She just showed a little appreciation. But what if she really does need us? Cody's right. This is the job we all signed on for. <sighs> Agreed. How do we get up there? The mountain roads are iced over, and the upslope winds are too severe for flying. Boulder might be able to make it. She said she needed all of us. I have an idea. Good thinking, Cody. The MHQ is heavy enough, I shouldn't be a problem. Dad, phones are still out. I hope Mrs. Niederlander is all right. Just don't be disappointed with her when this turns out to be nothing. I don't think she'd bring us all up there unless it was important. One would hope.
Avalanche, hang on! Everyone okay? Uh, yeah. okay. Affirmative. Uh, yeah. Yes. Relative to what? Though I do suggest we proceed on foot from here. Agreed. Mrs. Niederlander, what Get in here before you let all the heat out. She looks fine to me. Hmm. No cats and trees either. Let's try to listen in. I am rather conflicted about eavesdropping. Think of it as covert surveillance. That works. Now, if you could tell us what the emergency is, Mrs. I need someone to deliver my midwinter morning packages. I. We all just. You. Hmm. You brought us all the way up here during the worst nor'easter in 300 years? So we can run your errands? It's the least you can do after your robots wreck my car. <gasps> okay, let me tell you something. <clears throat> Mrs. Niederlander, what makes the delivery of these packages an emergency? They're important to the whole community. I hardly think... Dad, she's right. They are important. Mrs. Niederlander is the rider of Midwinter. <gasps> How old are you? I'm not the original, you knucklehead. Before me, it was old man Delgado. Before him, Mrs. Crabtree. But why do you do it? This holiday began because of one selfless act of kindness. Every year it gets a little harder for people to remember that. I do it so they won't forget. That's a very good reason. And for the last 49 years, I've never missed a midwinter morning. And you're not gonna miss this one either. Not if we can help it. But we'll have to move fast. It'll be morning in a few hours. We need some big bags. Have any sheets we can use? Plenty. Now enough chit chat. Let's move it, people. Wow, who knew cranky Mrs. Niederlander had a heart of gold? Not me. <clears throat> I must be coming down with something. Me too. <laughs> Even though we don't get sick. Okay, robots. Looks like we have deliveries to make. Riders of Midwinter, roll to the rescue! Aha! If you could open your heart and see what's inside, you'd find a magical place with all kinds of treasure you don't want to hide. It knows what a gesture can bring, like the warmth of a fire. It's brighter and brighter The light in their eyes Light the fire You know the reason Is not just the season There's something much more Light the fire With every heart warming The midwinter morning Together we'll all light the fire There's a glow No. 
like we barely made it. It also looks like Mrs. Niederlander miscounted. There's one left. She counted right. That one's ours. Wow. I guess I wasn't expecting anything. That makes it kind of nice. I imagine that's just how everyone felt on the first midwinter morning. Oh, nice. That belongs to all of Didn't us, I you know. Didn't I teach you any I manners? You slobbered on it. What? I'm hungry. Not able to consume bread, I feel as if we're missing something. Maybe if we sniff it? It's not about the bread. No, it's about the internal combustion. Right, Cody? Bringing us closer and closer to what we're here for. Like the fire, you know the reason is not just the season. There's something much more like Chocolate? Made it myself. Happy midwinter morning, Mr. Prescott. Oh, same to you, Danny. That's the thought that counts. Mm. Despite expectations, the bonfire has gathered a surprisingly large number of citizens. And everyone looks pretty happy. Especially for people whose presents are on the bottom of the ocean. Boy, that must be some bread. Yeah, it is. Okay, I know this'll come as a shock, but I never liked this holiday. Oh, really? Shocking. And you've hidden it so Thank well. Thank you for cluing us in. No, 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 it's true. I have to admit, though, it was kind of fun saving it. Kids, Mrs. Niederlander has asked to speak with us. Thank you, Charlie. Because of you and your trusty robots, we have the holiday I've been longing for. People woke up this morning and held that bread in their hands and remembered why we celebrate. But now I've come to realize my days as the writer are behind me. Don't say that. Nope. It's time to pass the bread. Therefore, I would like to ask, would you all consider being the new writers of Midwinter? Mrs. Niederlander, my family and I would be honored. I can be in charge of baking the bread. 